Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror mystery film, Sen and Tunt Chi. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a little girl picking mushrooms in the forest of the Alps. A bright ray of light shines through, seemingly to lead her somewhere. It reveals to be a boy on a tree, holding a mirror to reflect the sunlight. The girl follows the light to find the cluster of mushrooms. She runs over happily for the mushrooms, but accidentally finds a skeleton there. The girl can't help bursting out screaming like a chicken. Soon after, the police come to investigate and search for evidence. After an autopsy, they are shocked to find that the bone belongs to a young man who died 30 years ago. Besides that, the policeman asks the girl to identify the mysterious boy she saw from the tree from the missing person reports. Surprisingly, they find the boy has been missing since 1975. It means what the girl saw may be a ghost. The officer doesn't believe in ghosts. As a result, the girl's mother tells him a story that happened a long time ago. Time flies back to 1975. In the village of Brisson Alps, Switzerland, there was an astonishing murder taking place. It turns out, a priest is found hanging in the church. The only sheriff left in the village rushes to take care of the case. After examination, the coroner finds the body has no other wounds. People in the village are curious about his cause of death, but all the clues indicate that the priest commits suicide. The bishop thinks the dead priest must have been bewitched by the devil. Even so, the bishop still holds a funeral for him. Shortly after the funeral, a strange girl shows up in the village. She looks dirty and unkempt, and seems too weak to walk herself. As the girl is about to faint, the sheriff takes the girl back to the police station and tries to clean her dirty face. Unexpectedly, the girl wakes up and forces a kiss on him when the doctor just comes in. The situation seems a bit embarrassing for them, so the doctor simply does a quick check on the sexy girl and leaves with hormone jealousy. Luckily, the girl is quite healthy, but she acts rude and can't speak any language. Obviously, the girl isn't raised in a civilized environment. The sheriff wants to find a place for the girl to stay temporarily. He then visits the mayor's tavern, where a group of villagers has gathered to discuss the mysterious girl in their small village. One of the villagers says he once came across the same girl when he was cutting firewood in the forest, but she stared at him for a while and ran away. The villagers are afraid that the mysterious girl may be a devil, bringing bad omen to the village. While they are having a heated discussion, the sheriff takes the girl in and asks the mayor's wife if she can offer shelter to the girl temporarily. Mayor's wife rejects him because people in town doubt that the girl is related to the death of the priest. She kindly reminds the sheriff that the girl has a wood carving, which belongs to a young nomad herdsman who lives with his uncle on the mountaintop. She suggests the sheriff go to check if the two herdsmen are well first. For the girl's safety, the sheriff puts her in prison and hurries to visit the two herdsmen on the mountain. The young herdsman boy is an orphan raised by his herdsman uncle. They live together on the top of the mountain. The sheriff finally reaches their house, but finds no one around. So he leaves a note and prepares to go. As the sheriff is about to leave, a shaky hand unexpectedly stretches behind the window, as if someone is asking for help. However, the sheriff doesn't notice it and leaves. He then returns to the police station, only to find the bishop is waiting for him. The bishop believes the girl must be a devil and scares her with a cross. The girl seems to be afraid of the cross. To protect her, the sheriff chases the annoying bishop away and takes her home. He tries to comfort the girl and make her happy. The girl seems to like him because he smells good, so she kisses him again. Although having a crush on her, the sheriff controls himself and tucks her to bed like a giant baby. The sheriff determines to find out the identity of the girl. The next day, he takes the girl to investigate missing persons in town. He eventually finds a woman who has almost the same appearance as the girl. However, this woman was suspected of arson and burning three herdsmen to death, and she had disappeared 25 years ago. To find out the truth, the sheriff sends the girl to the mayor for custody. He goes to find the former sheriff who was responsible for the murder case. There, the former sheriff is impressed with the missing woman as it's the only unsolved case in his career. But he knows nothing about the woman's identity except that the woman is a gypsy. While the girl is waiting for the sheriff in the mayor's factory, the bishop suddenly rushes in with a knife and intends to kill her. Fortunately, the mayor stops his insanity in time. The girl gets scared because of that and runs all the way into the mayor's house. At this time, the mayor's pregnant wife is at home alone. Seeing the hungry girl rushes in, she kindly brings her some food. But as a Christian, the mayor's wife draws a cross on the food as usual to pray. However, the girl is frightened by the cross and acts crazy towards the mayor's wife and attacks her suddenly. When the sheriff gets back from the investigation, the girl has gone. So is the mayor's unborn child. Feeling guilty about the mayor and his wife, the sheriff leaves their house and decides to find out the truth on his own. 
The film then switches to a flashback, where a stranger named Martin pays a visit to the small village and happens to see the herdsman uncle. Martin claims that he just broke up with his girlfriend, so he wants to stay away from the noisy city and joins them in the cabin built on this peaceful mountaintop. The herdsman uncle takes his cash and leads Martin to their place. Later that night, they drink together to kill their boring time. Martin thinks of his ex-girlfriend and falls into sadness suddenly. To cheer him up, the uncle tells him a dirty legend about Senetunchke. It is said that once upon a time, three lonely and horny herdsmen created a doll using brooms and rags, hoping they can make it a real woman for companion. The devil met their wishes and made the doll a real sexy woman. They are all satisfied by the doll because she could not only do housework perfectly during the day, but also satisfy their dirty desires at night. After the story, the uncle then asked his nephew to make a similar doll as a joke. They were so drunk that they sang and danced with the doll, pretending that the doll had become a real woman. But actually, none of them took the legend seriously. However, the next day when they woke up, they saw a girl in the kitchen, wearing the same clothes as the doll, as if the doll had truly turned into a real person. It turns out, this is the girl that later showed up in the village and was rescued by the sheriff. The uncle is kind of afraid, as according to the legend, the doll-turned woman ends up flaying the three nasty herdsmen and turning them into dolls in a brutal sequence. However, Martin didn't believe that bullshit. He insisted that the girl in front of them must get lost in the mountain and they should send her back before the police came for her. The uncle agreed at first, but when he's going to take the girl down the mountain, he couldn't control this hormone urge and ended up assaulting her. Back to the sheriff, he is worried about the missing girl after she runs out of the mayor's house, but he has no idea where she has gone. At this time, the sheriff notices a warrant with Martin on it. It turns out that Martin is wanted for killing his ex-girlfriend. That's why he escaped to the mountaintop and hid the truth from the herdsman uncle and nephew. In the flashback, Martin was surprised to see the girl still in their cabin. To avoid the police search, he dragged the girl out and intended to push the sexy girl off the mountain cliff. However, after the push and pull for a while, he also couldn't control his urge and assaulted the girl on the way, so he changed his mind and took the girl back to sate their lust. That night, the uncle and Martin even forced the nephew onto the girl as well. The next morning, the girl took her revenge to flay all the sheep they raised, imitating the way the herdsman uncle slaughtered them. The uncle was so angry to find that his sheep were all dead. He swore that he must kill the girl. However, to save the girl's life, Martin hid her in the storehouse, then pretended to search for her with the uncle. When they got home in the evening, Martin found himself infected with tetanus. It turns out that he was bitten by the girl when he raped her last night. The uncle tried to take him to the village for treatment. However, to avoid being caught by the police, Martin refused that and confided to the uncle about his crime. Having no other choice, the uncle decided to take care of Martin's wound. He then asked the nephew to take some medicine from the storehouse. The nephew went to the storehouse, but was knocked out by the girl hiding there. Later, the uncle hadn't seen the nephew's return, so he ran into the storehouse to look for him. When he suddenly found the girl there, the uncle locked her in the storehouse and burned it immediately, trying to kill her that way. However, the girl climbed out from the chimney, leaving the nephew inside. It's too late when the uncle finally saw his nephew in the fire and burned to death. The uncle was so mad and hung the girl on the beam, swearing to kill her by himself. At the critical moment, Martin showed up and threatened the uncle to free the girl. As soon as the girl was released, she grabbed a knife to stab into the old man's body. Martin couldn't believe what had happened in front of him. He was so weak and fainted once again. When he woke up the second time, he saw the girl beside him in panic. Martin asked her to get some medicine for him from the village. Though she couldn't understand what Martin meant, the girl still went down from the mountain, and that's how she met the sheriff in the village as shown at the beginning. It turns out that the shaky hand on the window during the sheriff's first visit is Martin's. Obviously, Martin died in a struggle. Meanwhile, the sheriff keeps searching for the girl after she runs away. He suddenly thinks of the bishop, who tries to kill the girl several times, so he privately searches the bishop's house. As expected, the sheriff finds a secret chamber with a girl's doll in it. Apparently, a little girl was kept captive there for a long time. Because of that, the sheriff arrests the bishop immediately. In the police station, the bishop confesses his crimes. It's revealed that the said missing gypsy woman happens to be the girl's mother. 25 years ago, the gypsy woman was raped and impregnated by the bishop. So she escaped to the mountain, hiding in a house of the legendary three herdsmen who happened to treat her as a doll turned woman. But she was later found and cornered by the bishop, causing her to fall off the cliff. To cover up his crimes, the bishop killed the three herdsmen and burned their house and then hid their daughter in the secret chamber. 
The dead priest was tasked by the bishop to take care of a little girl. Every time the priest took her the food, he would threaten her with a cross, which explains why the missing girl is afraid to see the cross. What's more, the priest didn't commit suicide, but died accidentally once the girl tried to escape days ago. But the bishop disguises the priest's death as suicidal in order to cover all things up. After her successful escape to the mountain, the girl happened to hide in the herdsman's house. That's how the story begins. Back at the sheriff, while he interrogates the bishop, a kid in the village rushes to tell him that the missing girl is seen on the mountain. The sheriff then imprisons the bishop and races to the mountain, searching for the girl. In the herdsman's house, he finally finds the girl he has been concerned about. They are so happy to meet again and exchange hugs using their muscles. The girl is so excited to see the sheriff again and shows him her newly made toys. Much to his shock, her toys are the dolls made of the herdsman uncle, nephew, and Martin's body. It turns out that the girl killed the three and didn't even know what she just did. She just makes the men into dolls in the same way as the nephew did to the brooms, thinking that they will be alive that way. The sheriff is stunned by what he saw. He remembers the bishop's words that the girl is a devil, so he shouts at the girl in a chicken voice. The girl has never seen him like this before. She is frightened and runs into the mountain. It is shrouded in clouds and mist. The sheriff follows her, but the girl can't see the road clearly and falls in a ravine by mistake, seemingly killing herself. The sheriff reproaches himself for showing his anger at her. In panic, he rushes down to search, but only to find her dead body. In regret, he shoots himself to end his life. Back to the present, the police conduct a thorough search of the whole woods, but what they found is no legendary haunting devil at all, but just an innocent girl that died by accident and the sheriff that killed himself due to his guilt. This Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.